The Rockefeller Habits Checklist is a simple yet powerful list of 10 headings and 40 different elements that we believe make the difference between a good and a great company. The Rockefeller Habits Checklist has been devised as a simple checklist over many years from mastering the Rockefeller Habits through scaling up to give a company a really good measuring stick as to how they're performing on their scaling up journey. Let's take a moment and walk through the Rockefeller Habits Checklist. The Rockefeller Habits Checklist is a list of 10 headings and 40 items that can be used to determine how your company is traveling at any one point on its journey to greatness. These 40 items are broken up into 10 headings, which are number one, having a healthy team. Number two, having an alignment with everybody in the business around the number one or most important thing. Three is meeting rhythms, so having a formal structured sense of rhythm in the meetings with agendas to ensure that consistently great execution is achieved. Number four is clear accountabilities for everyone within the business. Five is consistent and repeatable employee feedback. Six is consistent and repeatable customer feedback. Seven is having the values and the purpose alive within the business. Eight is having every employee having the ability to articulate the strategy. Nine is every employee knowing how to have a great day or week quantitatively. And 10 is having the plans and performance visible to everyone within the organization. So let's take a look at the most important thing to get right first is having a healthy executive team. Rockefeller habit number one tells us that the executive team is healthy and aligned. So team members understand each other's differences, priorities and styles. The team meets frequently, weekly is best, for strategic planning. The team participates in ongoing executive education. The team is able to engage in constructive debates and all members feel comfortable participating. To determine whether or not an executive team is healthy, we look to our thought leader, Pat Lencioni, and his book, The Five Dysfunctions of a Team. In his book, Pat teaches us that the five dysfunctions of a team are, firstly, absence of trust, which is the bottom and the foundation on which all healthy teams are built. Next is fear of conflict, and then lack of a commitment, Next is avoidance of accountability, and then finally, inattention to results. Without these key elements, any team will be suffering, and we certainly recommend that executive teams both read the book and undertake the assessments that Pat provides to determine where are the opportunities for improvement within each executive team. So what does an executive team look like and how do you get them aligned? Well, I would certainly recommend reading page 114 to 116 about the council in Jim Collins' book, Good to Great, which provides a great understanding of how to set up and what the parameters of an executive team should look like. Next, we have priorities, or having everyone aligned to the most important thing. Here we have Everyone is aligned with the number one thing that needs to be accomplished this quarter to move the company forward. The critical number is identified to move the company ahead this quarter. Three to five priorities or rocks that support the critical number are identified and ranked for the quarter. A quarterly theme and celebration reward are announced to all employees that bring the critical number to life. Quarterly theme critical number are posted throughout the company and employees are aware of the progress each week. When we look across the one-page plan, columns four, five, six, and seven are the execution component. That really tells us how we're going to execute on our strategy in the next year and the next quarter. On the one-page plan in this slide, we can see the priorities for the company for the three to five year, the one year, and the 90 day time frame. What we're trying to do with Rockefeller Habit 2 is to provide focus and alignment with the priorities in the company for everybody. And the best quote that I know of that helps to clearly describe this is, 
The main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. At the top of column 4 and column 5, the 1 year and 90 day plan, we have the outcomes. These are the financial targets or metrics that we want to get to at the end of that 90 day or 1 year period. At the bottom of column 4 and column 5, we have the critical number and counterbalance number. These are the most important numbers that we need to focus on achieving in the 90 day and 1 year periods. In the critical number section of the one page plan, you'll notice some colours, some red, amber and green colours. Well, these are our success criteria. That is, this is how we determine throughout the one page plan and other dashboards and things where we're tracking. So dark green or super green is our stretch goal. Green is the acceptable goal that we're trying to achieve and red is unacceptable or the absolute minimum that we have to achieve. Of course, amber is between green and red because amber is lower than green and higher than red. Once we know the outcomes we're trying to achieve or the financial metrics that we're trying to get to in this 90 day or one year period, and we know the most important number or critical number that we're trying to achieve also in this period, that's when we can begin to set our priorities for the year or the quarter. And the priorities are made up for the quarter of a number of rocks that help to deliver on that critical number, that help to deliver on our priorities for the year and also our key priorities for the three to five year time frame. It's all good and well that the leadership team might know the priorities for the coming quarter, but does the rest of the business, does everybody in the business know what is the number one thing that this business has to do in the next 90 days? And that's why we use a theme. Themes must be fun, they must include everyone, and they must align everyone in the business behind and give complete clarity on what is the most important thing that we've got to do in the next 90 days or the next year. When Mark Rawlinson and the leadership team at New System Laundry learned that in the next 90 days their sales target was 3.14 million, they came up with a great idea for a theme, and that was to have the mathematical equivalent of pi being 3.14 led them to the idea of having throw a pie at a senior guy. And every time during the 13 weeks they hit their sales budget, the best performing salesperson had the privilege of being able to put a cream pie in the face of any one of the leadership team that he liked. And it was such a fun and great idea that everyone in the business was able to get behind it. Maracay Homes is a privately held residential home builder in the Phoenix and Tucson, Arizona markets and wanted to focus the entire company on sales growth during the recovery from the economic recession. They used an acronym to help include and involve all team members, CRIME PAYS. The acronym CRIME stands for CR is Community Reviews, I is Inventory Strategy, M is the Product Mix or Mix, M is a marketing plan and E is execute every month of the quarter. The leadership team used posters, skits and other creative props to keep awareness high and involve all team members in the quarterly priority. Pictured here are some of the leadership team criminals who dressed up for their launch skit as jailbirds to help kick off the quarterly focus using the theme. Sometimes using a theme requires both creativity and courage from the leadership team. Let's look at the third Rockefeller habit, meeting rhythms. Communication rhythm is established and information moves through the organization accurately and quickly. All employees are in a daily huddle that lasts less than 15 minutes. All teams have a weekly meeting. The executive and middle managers meet for a day of learning, resolving big issues and DNA transfer each month. Quarterly and annually, the executive and middle managers meet offsite to work on the four decisions. Have you ever seen or experienced awe-inspiring synchronization? How did you feel? What did you think? It doesn't come through winging it. Synchronization, precision in execution, comes from a fully aligned, trusting team that communicates frequently and quickly. So in this context, it takes the form of the meeting rhythm, 
a daily, weekly, monthly or quarterly meeting where the agenda is set and every single day, every employee that is required attends and goes through. So the daily, the objective of the daily meeting is tactics and communication, understanding where we're at. The weekly is about priorities and debate, getting an understanding of where we are in our 13-week race. The monthly is about big issues and DNA transfer, getting people who would be one or two-thirds through the quarterly to update and have a deep dive. And then the quarterly is one day or two days every quarter or year, which is about strategic thinking and execution planning. A daily huddle is a 9 to 12 minute meeting, no more, no less, where each person answers these three key questions. What's up? What are the daily metrics for you or your department? And where are you stuck? This is a stand-up meeting that is full of energy. It's not a sit-down and it's compulsory to attend. For the weekly, we have a set agenda which begins with Good news, five minutes, no more. Next is priorities and numbers. Of the elements that we're tracking, the priorities for the quarter, the priorities for the year, how are we tracking on those? How's each person tracking on their priorities? And how's each person tracking on their KPIs? Next is customer employee data. So that is the start, stop, keep. That is the ENPS, the net promoter score. It is also the 4Q, which we'll get to in a moment. Then we've got 30 minutes of collective intelligence or someone bringing in some kind of outside items or problems for the leadership team to discuss. And then a who, what, when summary and then a, a one phrase close so that the meeting closes on the hour. We must have a commitment to timeliness. For Vishal Gupta, who is the managing director of Asiana Housing, he was having some real problems trying to get all of his managers together and trying to implement the meeting rhythm into his business. He had 70 managers that looked after 480 staff and 4,500 contractors all throughout India. And the thought of having them all come together for a daily meeting once per month was almost overwhelming. But they decided to do it and to bring all 70 managers together for a day of intensive learning and DNA transfer. Of course, the cost was a concern and for that, they decided they would commit no more than 7% of the total executive salary. So what were the results? Well, first of all, revenue tripled. During the first monthly meeting, the team tackled a huge issue, sales conversions, and the market for housing had slowed down in 2009, so the company wanted to boost its business. The challenge wasn't getting traffic to its developments, it was converting visitors into customers. After the 70 leaders discussed the issue for several hours, the big idea that emerged was creating a wow factor at each of its locations, requiring coordination of the construction and maintenance teams. In addition, the team decided to provide customer service training to guards greeting potential customers and to increase the number of signs directing customers to the sales and rental offices. All activities could be implemented immediately because the entire middle management team was, pre was part of creating the solution. The result? Monthly sales tripled by the end of the year and have been high ever since. The second impact was huge time savings. Ashiana hosts a show and tell session during these monthly management meetings in which teams from both construction and maintenance highlight a best practice from the previous month. In one case, the company's new construction team in Poon had created a way to construct a kitchen in six to seven fewer days and for slightly less money. Immediately, the construction teams at four other locations implemented these best practices. Cutting down construction time by a week improves cash flow and speed sales, a big win that provides huge returns from the company's monthly investment. The third major thing was breaking down barriers. Pulling all 70 managers together forged stronger relationships across functions and business operations. For instance, accounting now understands better some of the challenges that maintenance faces. In turn, 
having all 70 together creates positive peer pressure as managers share their number at the beginning of the meeting Friday evening. Today, 100% of the 70 managers have one key performance indicator that definitively measures whether they've had a successful month or not. Within the first year, because of the formal and informal training and development that occurred during these meetings, the 70 middle managers were able to step up and run the day-to-day -day operations of the business. That leaves the three brothers more time to focus on the market-facing activities like land acquisition that continue to propel Asiana Housing ahead of its competition. Rockefeller Habit 4 is about accountability. So every facet of the organisation has a person assigned with accountability for ensuring goals are met. The function accountability chart or face is completed with the right people doing the right things right. Financial statements have a person assigned to each line item. Each of the four to nine processes on the process accountability chart or PACE has someone that is accountable for them and each of the three to five year key thrust or capabilities has a corresponding expert on the advisory board if internal expertise doesn't exist. In most small to medium businesses, many people are responsible for certain items but very few people are accountable. And what we often see is that accountability always falls back to the managing director or CEO or founder. And many people within the organization are responsible for many things, but not directly accountable. The tools that we use in this area are the function accountability chart and the process accountability chart to help to drive accountability away from one or two people right through the organization. In this course, within the people section, we completed the function accountability chart. The PACE or process accountability chart doesn't form a part of this course, but it is available online on our website along with instructions on how to use it. When we put the PACE and the FACE together onto the one page strategic plan in column seven for the individual, we define what each person's accountabilities are, be it something from a face or from a pace. So generally, I like to think that the function accountability chart, that identifies roles that you would employ someone for, whereas the pace, that is KPIs that someone is not solely employed for. So for example, safety might be something that needs to be on the process accountability chart, but it's not worthy given the size of the company to employ a person who is solely accountable for safety, which means that it would lie on the function accountability chart. So again, function accountability chart, that's where a person's role is accountable for something, whereas process accountability chart, that is the five to seven things that people aren't employed directly for. The fifth Rockefeller habit is about employee engagement or employee feedback. Ongoing employee input is collected to identify obstacles and opportunities. All executives and middle managers have a start, stop, keep conversation with at least one employee weekly. The insights from employee conversations are shared at the executive team meeting. Employee input about obstacles and opportunities is being collected weekly and a mid-management team is accountable for the process of closing the loop on all obstacles and opportunities. So what is a start stop keep conversation? It's a simple weekly conversation that a mid-level or executive manager has with an employee where they ask, tell me what do you think we should start doing? What do you think we should stop doing? And what do you think we should keep doing? When we collect this data, this is then discussed at the weekly and monthly meeting as a specific agenda item for 10 minutes so that every single week, every manager comes in and discusses both the start, stop, keep and the employee or ENPS information so that we can understand and have a system as time goes on to be able to collect all of the concerns, things that we're doing well, things that we could do better. And of course, this then should be going into feed the accountabilities of the HR person. This might not be something that they are directly accountable for, but 
as, as the system improves and as we're able to collect data and then work to improve the things that our employees are telling us through a system, that should drive better results from the HR manager on the face chart. Rockefeller Habit 6, Customer Feedback. Reporting and analysis of customer feedback data is as frequent and accurate as financial data. All executives and middle managers have a 4Q conversation with at least one end user weekly. The insights from customer conversations are shared at the weekly executive team meeting. All employees are involved in collecting customer data. A mid-management team is accountable for the process of closing the loop on all customer feedback. So if customers are the ones that put food on our table, we've got to have a really good understanding of what they're happy about, how things are in their world and what we could do better. We must serve the customer and we make it every manager and senior manager and executive's job to do this just like the employee side of things, to build this into a system that we do on a regular basis that is discussed at the executive level as an agenda item. So the 4Q survey that we talk about or the four question survey is one, how are you doing? This is all about them and it starts off on the right note. Number two is what's going on in your industry or neighborhood. This can be changed if it's a B2B or a B2C business. Number three, what do you hear about our competitors? And then number four, of course, is how are we doing? And again, this provides us with great insight at the executive level on how to improve. And if by asking these four questions repeatedly over a period of time, certain issues emerge, we will be forced as an executive or leadership team to have to address those issues and therefore serve the core customer's need better. After that first customer insight, the four question survey, we then have a separate insight into customer advocacy of the net promoter score, which asks one simple question on a scale of one to 10, how likely would you be to recommend our company to a friend or relative. And this is fast becoming a worldwide standard in measuring customer satisfaction, where we have promoters, which rate us a nine or 10. We have passives, a seven or eight, and we have detractors or people who definitely wouldn't promote us as a zero to six. And when we analyze this data repeatedly over time, we're able to have a great understanding of how to improve the business and how our customers are ranking us. Because what we want is obviously more customers who would go out and promote us to their friends. In 2008, ILINet, one of the largest internet service providers in Australia, decided to adopt the net promoter score and focus on customer service. What that resulted in was gazelle-like growth over the subsequent four years that positioned them in number three in internet fixed broadband in Australia. By 2012, their plus 60 net promoter score was far superior than the international industry average. In 2010, IINet bought a business called AAPT Retail and they worked on customer service and measurement with the IINet net promoter score system and you can see via this chart how from the acquisition date in October 2010 over the coming year they took the net promoter score from minus 14 all the way through to plus 32 by focusing on delivering that high quality customer service and by measuring it. When we look at the function accountability chart, we're recommending that there should be a person, a role that is accountable for customer advocacy because it's that important. We can see the results and the impact that it had on IINet by focusing on the net promoter score or creating advocates within our customer database. We also must measure the net promoter score as well as the 4Q, and this must be brought to the weekly meeting via an agenda item, the same item as employee data, and discussed during that 10 minutes to make sure that all of the concerns that are out there about our business are being discussed and spoken about at all times. Rockefeller Habit 7, the core values and purpose are alive. Core values and purpose are alive in the organization. Core values are discovered, 
purpose is articulated and both are known by all employees. All executives and middle managers refer back to the core values and purpose when giving praise or reprimands. HR processes and activities align with the core values and purpose such as hiring, orientation, appraisal and recognition. Actions are identified and implemented each quarter to strengthen the core values and purpose in the organisation. It's important to bring the core values and purpose to life because what we're trying to do is avoid that scenario we've all seen where we walk into reception, we see a values or mission or vision statement and it's dusty, no one knows what it means and it seems completely pointless. So what we're really trying to do here is to make every employee completely understand who we are and why we exist. So some of the ways we can bring this to life is storytelling through recruitment and selection, our onboarding process, performance appraisals, recognition, themes, newsletters, and just everyday modelling or reinforcement, which means praise and reprimand around the core values and purpose. An example might be, can you help me to understand when you threw that pen at the person, how you were helping to live out value of caring for one another? For Canon Safe, Canon Safe have a special ceremony after the onboarding process of three months for new employees where the CEO presents the new employee with a coin which has the core values embossed on the front. Rackspace provide a dog tag for employees and the PhysioCo provide an annual culture book that talks about their values, their purpose their mission and where they're going and tells core value stories so that everyone understands exactly what the behaviours are to live in that organisation. And this is the spot on the one page plan where we bring the values and purpose to life. Every quarter, along with building our 90 day execution plan, we should be asking ourselves, what can we do this quarter to bring our values and our purpose and even our BHAG to life? Brand promises and key thrusts. Articulating the strategy. Employees can articulate the following key components of the company's strategy accurately. Big, hairy, audacious goal, or BHAG, the progress is tracked and visible. Core customers, their profile in 25 words or less. Three brand promises and the corresponding brand promise KPIs are reported on weekly. Elevator pitch, a compelling response to the question, what does your company do? If you look above the reception in Naomi Simpson's Red Balloon Company, you would see this dashboard counting every single experience on the way to their big hairy audacious goal of 2 million customer experiences by 2015. Of course, as they got closer and closer and eventually achieved the BHAG, the 2 million number was really important and rewarding to everybody in the organisation. We have a tool, the seven strata, which builds out these four elements and will help you to articulate your strategy and to develop your strategy, the page behind the one page plan, as it were. Rockefeller Habit 9 is about metrics and dashboards. All employees can answer quantitatively whether they had a good day or week, which is column seven on the one page plan. One or two KPIs are reported on weekly for each role or person. Each employee has one critical number that aligns with the company's critical number for the quarter, so there's a clear line of sight. Each individual or team has three to five priorities or rocks that align with those of the company, so we have the waterfall effect. All executives and middle managers have a coach or peer coach holding them accountable to behaviour changes. We've been through the face and the pace to understand the individual's KPIs and we recommend using KPI library to try to determine what are the KPIs for which person. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. In column seven, each individual has their own individual KPIs built from the face and sometimes the pace, perhaps a leading and lagging, which tells us how the individual is working in the business. The priorities for the individual for the quarter in the middle of column seven 
tells us how the individual is working on the business and then the critical number for the quarter tells us the most important thing that the individual is working on in this 90 day period. At the top of the plan, we've got to ensure that we've got a balance between the people and the process side of the business. So as we build out the key performance indicators, the pace, any of the other key measurables that need to be tracked, we must have that balance to ensure that employees, customers, shareholders, what we make and buy, what we sell, and our record keeping, all of these key elements have a balance in the measurement so that we don't get blindsided. Rockefeller Habit 9.4 tells us that all executives and middle managers have a coach or peer coach holding them accountable to behavior changes. What we are talking about here is having a person to ask the difficult questions of you, which could be a external person like a gazelle's coach, or it could be an internal person where a peer coach program is established, as was discussed by Marshall Goldsmith in his book, What Got You Here, Won't Get You There, someone that can come at a regular basis and ask you difficult questions and ensure that you are doing the things that you say that you're going to do. Rockefeller Habit 10 is visible plans and performance. The company's plans and performance are visible to everyone. A situation room is established for weekly meetings, physical or virtual. Core values, purpose and priorities are posted throughout the company. Scoreboards are up everywhere displaying current progress on KPIs and critical numbers. There is a system in place for tracking and managing the cascading priorities and KPIs. In this image, you can see the Silver Chef team in their situation room, surrounded by their core values posters and looking at a one-page strategic plan that is life-size on the wall as they have their daily huddle. Everybody can see the company's performance at all times because it's posted on the wall and they understand the strategy because it's posted on the wall. In the back of this slide, you can see a thermometer where they're tracking the seven key targets for this 90 day period. When SRG wanted to reinforce their purpose and values, they literally plastered it all over the walls of the office and on workstations. So how do you rate on these 40 items and 10 headings? Healthy team, alignment to the number one thing, meeting rhythms, clear accountabilities, employee feedback, customer feedback, values and purpose alive, articulate the strategy, knowing a great day or week and having the plans and performance visible. How many did you get out of 40? And if you could double that or even get close to 40, what would your business look like? I'm Brad Giles and this has been the Rockefeller Habits Checklist. Thanks for watching.